Okay, someone asked a question about what happens if you combine a series and a parallel circuit to make something more complicated. Um, and I would highly recommend using uh, this DC circuit construction kit um, to have a play around with it. Um, that's the best way of understanding it. But we can apply the ideas I talked about before um, to think about the voltage and the current uh, in a more complicated circuit. So, um, what we've got here is a is a cell up here, um, and then one bulb, which then splits into two bulbs in parallel, and all the bulbs are identical. Um, you'll notice it's hard to see, but this bulb here has got. It seems a little bit more light coming out of it than these two bulbs, and we'll find out why in just a second. So, um, I suppose first of all we could talk about the current in this circuit. Now, you probably remember that in a series circuit the current is the same throughout a series circuit because the current can't go anywhere if the current flows through one part of the circuit here it has to flow through through this part of the circuit here as well I'm just going to hover this over this reads off the current and it says the current is 0.6 amps if we move down here the current will be 0.6 amps if we move over here the current will be 0.6 amps if we look over here up at the cell the current is point no, it doesn't like reading it through the cell. The current over here just before the cell is 0.6 amps. So the current is the same all the way around here because the electrons can't go anywhere. They have to flow through these wires. However, you'll notice that the current does split up here into these two branches and then rejoins here. Um, since these two branches are identical, then the current is going to halve. No one route is easier than the other. easier than the other. They're both the same difficulty to flow through. So and unsurprisingly, hopefully, the current in this branch is 0.3 amps and the current in this branch is 0.3 amps and then when they rejoin over here we've got 0.6 amps flowing through the rest of the circuit. So the current um, isn't particularly difficult. The current just divides when we get to a branch and then joins back up. Now I, it turns out I can actually change the resistance of these bulbs so if I make this bulb, for example, 20 ohms then even less current, so less current is going to flow through this branch than this branch. It's going to affect the current in the whole circuit as well. The current is now 0.54 amps, but because these bulbs are no longer identical, the current isn't going to split equally. So this one in, in this case gets 0.36 amps, and this one gets 0.18 because it's harder to flow through that branch. But nonetheless, 0.36 and 0.18 add up to 0.54. I'll just turn this one back into its original state. Now how about voltage uh, energy transfer? I can get a voltmeter as well. Now the voltage across the cell apparently is 9 volts. So this 9 volts has to be used up no matter which route electrons go. So if electrons go through the top branch and back through the cell, they're going to lose 9 volts. If they go through the bottom branch and back through the cell, they're also going to lose 9 volts. And the energy, and therefore the voltage change, doesn't matter which branch they go through. So the voltage across this branch, which is 3 volts, should be the same uh, as the voltage across this... Uh, excuse me for moving that should be the same as the voltage across this branch which is also 3 volts so the voltage across any branches in parallel is the same but in this case it's different from the voltage across this component which is in series with these so this component gets a larger share of the voltage it gets 6 volts whereas these components only get 3 volts now the rule for, for working that out, um, I'll probably do in another video. So for now, it's just worth knowing, uh, well, reminding yourself that definitely if we've got branches in parallel, um, then the voltage across each of the things in parallel is the same. Um, and still, for any journey around the circuit, the voltage dropped, the, 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 the potential difference, the voltage lost, adds up to the voltage gained at the cell. So if we went around the bottom route, we would lose 6 volts here 
and 3 volts here which adds up to the 9 volts gained there. So regardless of the route taken the, the, the voltage lost adds up to the voltage gained at the cells. I'll probably have to do another video to, to look at other eventualities here but hopefully that helps.